the top five dividend funds in our community versus bonds. That's what we'll be talking about in today's video. Hello, member super savers and bond course fans. I hope you're healthy and well. So it seems that many of you in our community voted SCHD as the best dividend fund out there, as you can see from this recent poll that we ran. SCHT is the winner by a wide margin. In fact, this margin is so wide, I'm actually curious. If you own SCHT, why do you think SCHT is the best dividend fund out there? Drop a comment below and let the community know. So given these results and the general interest in dividend funds, I thought it would be interesting to share an overview of some of our findings and thoughts from the recent dividend fund mini series that we just wrapped up in our member zone. For those of you who are a bit newer to dividend funds, SCHD is Schwab's US dividend equity ETF. VYM is Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF. VIG is Vanguard's dividend appreciation ETF and FDVV is Fidelity's High Dividend ETF. DGRO, which was not on this original list, is an additional dividend fund that quite a few of you have asked us about more recently. DGRO is BlackRock's iShares Core Dividend Growth ETF. Here are the three questions that we'll be covering in today's video. One, what are the similarities and differences between the top five dividend funds in our community? Two, how do FDVV, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO compare in terms of last year's performance? Three, what should you be mindful of when investing in dividend funds versus bonds? This last one is actually the question that first sparked our dividend fund member videos. And while we are a bond channel at heart, dividend funds are sometimes seen as a possible substitute for bonds or bond funds. So this was one that I felt was worth exploring further. As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Let's dive in now, folks. As we've done in our Dividend Fund member mini-series, let's first quickly cover what's the same between FDVV, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO. One. All of these dividend funds pay dividends quarterly, so four times a year. Two, investors in all of these dividend funds receive two types of returns from the funds. Dividends here in the form of a cash distribution. As well as capital gains from the appreciating value of the underlying stocks in the fund's portfolio. To access these capital gains and convert them to cash, however, an investor would have to sell some of their fund shares as only the dividends are paid out regularly. Now, let's move on to our side-by-side -side comparison of the differences between FDVV, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO. In this row, we have the dividend fund ticker and name, the date established, the index tracked, the expense ratio, and the total assets at the time of this taping. And in this column, we have the details for FDVV, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO. There are three primary takeaways from this comparison table in my mind. The first takeaway is that FDVV is the youngest, most expensive, and smallest of these five dividend funds. The second takeaway is that unlike S&P 500 index funds, which track the performance of the same 500 companies in the S&P 500 index, each of these dividend funds tracks a different index, as you can see here. And the third takeaway, because each of these dividend funds tracks a different index, the portfolio composition and performance across the funds have also been different in the past. So if we were to generalize, while you could almost say that it didn't really matter which S&P 500 fund of one of the leading asset managers you might have chosen in the past, this was not the case for dividend funds. Because dividend funds showed quite significant variations in historical performance and risk return profile, it did matter which one you chose. And we can see these differences pretty clearly when we look at the performance across the top five dividend funds in our community, even in just 2023 alone, which is a great segue into the next section of our video. 
In this section of our video, let's compare the performance for FDVV, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO in 2023. In this column, we have the fund ticker. Here we have the number of dividend payments per year and the expense ratio for each fund. And in this section, we'll do the performance comparison for 2023. In these three columns, we'll calculate the dividend yield or percentage distribution in cash. It's important to note that there is no standardized or uniform methodology in the industry for calculating this annual dividend yield, this percentage distribution in cash, as much of it will depend on when you purchase your shares in each fund. So what we've done is this. We took the total dividend in dollars for each share in 2023 and divided it by the net asset value, essentially the price per share at the beginning of 2023 to get to the dividend yield for 2023, this percentage distribution column here. In other words, we assume that you bought these funds at the beginning of the year, held your fund shares for that entire year, and received all the dividends from that year to arrive at the percentage distribution, or dividend yield for that year. So again, here's the dividend yield for each fund in 2023. And here is their total return for 2023, always assuming reinvestment of dividends. Meaning that this total annual return number already includes the reinvestment of this dividend yield, plus the capital appreciation in the underlying stocks held in each fund. Please note that this expense ratio is already included and that these calculations are all done before tax. And what we can see here, as I mentioned earlier, is this. Because each of these dividend funds tracks a different index, their portfolio composition is different. And as a result, their dividend yield and overall return has also been different in the past. The other thing that we can see here is that in 2023, FDVV had the highest percentage distribution and total return amongst these top five dividend funds. Again, that is because FDVV tracks a different index than SCHD, VYM, VIG, and DGRO. FDVV is sometimes referred to as a smart beta ETF in financial circles, and that's because FDVV tracks Fidelity's proprietary high dividend index, which has a screening and weighting system that is somewhat different and more complex than the classical dividend funds that focus more narrowly on, say, factors such as dividend payout, stability, and or growth. And because I know some of you will ask, FDVV's higher distribution yield and total annualized return relative to its peer group are consistent over the medium and long term as well. And our community poll winner, SCHD, shows the second highest dividend payout ratio for 2023, but at the same time, the lowest overall total return. The other three funds are somewhat in the middle between these two, you could say. So what do you make of these historical results? Is that what you were expecting? Does that change your opinion about your favorite dividend fund? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts with the community. And if this overview sparked your curiosity and you want to dive deeper into any of these dividend funds, their longer term performance, the indices that they track, plus which one I would personally buy and why, I invite you to check out the relevant dividend fund videos in the member zone. This one is an intro to dividend funds versus bonds in general, and these cover Fidelity's FDVV, Schwab's SCHD, and Vanguard's VYM and VIG in more detail. This last one here is a cross-firm comparison of FDVV, SCHD, VYM, and VIG. I've linked all of them below for your convenience. Because as I always say, you should never invest in something you do not understand. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next section of our video. Here are three important considerations to keep in mind about dividend funds versus bonds. One. Dividend funds are equity funds at their core. Dividend funds invest in the stocks of companies that have a high regular dividend payout. This also means that if we look at our best model portfolios from module six in bond masters, let's use the 50 to 59 age group as an example. Dividend funds fall into these stocks allocation percentages here, not the bonds allocation percentages. Two. Dividend funds are not a substitute for holding individual bonds to maturity. 
When you buy an individual bond and hold it to maturity, you know exactly how much you will get in interest payments and when, as well as how much you will get in principal repayment and when. With dividend funds, there is no guarantee of future dividends. In addition, if prices of the underlying stock held by these funds fall, this may offset or in a bad year more than offset the overall distribution yield. In addition, dividend funds have no guaranteed principal repayment. So if you ever want or need to cash in on more than the dividend, you will need to sell some of your shares at the then prevailing market prices. For those of you who are in bond masters, you can find more details on the advantages of holding individual bonds to maturity in our three C's here in module five, individual bonds, bond funds, etc. But even if you're not in bond masters, but have been with us for some time already, you should be familiar with our three C's, clarity, control, and cost as the primary reasons for holding individual bonds to maturity from this video here. Also linked below in the first pinned comment. Three, dividend funds are generally more suitable for investors who want a high dividend yield and or regular dividend payments. If regular dividend payments are not a priority for you, if you plan on reinvesting those dividends into the same dividend fund for growth and or you're looking for the highest annual total return, then you should note that broad-based S&P 500 index funds have historically yielded higher total returns over time than dividend funds. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of dividend funds versus bonds and learned something new. And if you did and are craving more, then check out our dividend fund member mini series here for a deeper dive into FTVV, SCHD, VYM, and VIG. If on the other hand, bonds are more your cup of tea at the moment, then check out this video here on our two recently launched bond courses. And let me walk you through the easiest, safest, and most cost-effective way to start investing in bonds and build a bond portfolio while yields are still attractive. Take a look at the links below this video for more details on our bond courses and YouTube Super Super Saver membership. All right, member Super Savers and Bond Course fans, see you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.